G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the next 12 Plasma Caster. This is a standalone energy weapon with custom animations for reloading. The sounds are of vanilla, and the projectiles are an altered version of the green plasma bullets that you'd see from a plasma gun in the vanilla game, except they're blue, which means they're cooler. This thing is chambered in the standard plasma cartridges, but the disc above the trigger there is what you'll actually use to reload this thing, and there's the animations that. We'll get to that when we get to that, but first of all, we'll go over the attachments which there are many. So first of all, I've got the receivers. It's Mark 1, but you can go all the way up to Mark 6, which will increase your damage substantially. 193 ballistic and energy damage, respectively, there, which is pretty good. But also reduce the weight of the weapon to 3.3, which is incredibly light for a weapon. Like, exceedingly light. You don't even get laser pistols in this game that are about as light as that so potentially a really good option for a survival mode playthrough where you are lacking in a little bit of strength and you want to carry around junk and stuff as well a decent weapon for that type of uh role right now i've got no legendary effects we'll leave that as empty and this is the upper rail which you can have nothing which is just a picatinny rail you can cover that up if you feel like it but you can utilize that picatinny rail to put on some sites which are all custom made so none of this Call of Duty Modern Warfare sights on these are all unique. This one's a reflex sight. We'll throw that one on and we'll move on. To change the fire mode, you can go from semi-auto to full auto. If you go over to full auto, you'll get a little bit of damage penalty, but the DPS gaining would be a lot higher. So we'll go for a full auto receiver on this thing to complement the reflex sight that we've got on it. And you can do much the same thing with the lower rail, including a cover, which covers up the Picatinny rail, or an overcharge module, which think of it as like a grenade launcher. And we'll get to using this in a second, but suffice it to say, it's like a grenade launcher sort of thing. Like a mini BFG on the bottom of your plasma gun. Pretty nice, eh? Next up, we've got the barrels. Right now, it's a splitter, an improved version of the splitter, which has a lot more range and accuracy over the standard. A carbine is a short barrel. You can have an improved version of that. 264 range for a carbine barrel, I think, is interesting. Also, 150 accuracy means we're going to be very, very accurate in VATS. There's also an accelerator, which will increase your spread range and sorry decrease your spread and accelerates the projectiles to much higher speed so if you want this to be a sniper weapon then that's a really good choice funnily enough that range has gone up so high that you're going to hit anything that's basically in rendered distance like your average range that you get out of this game is like not even half of that so that's interesting so if we want to hit absolutely everything ever in vats then there you go, there's your solution right there. There's also a targeting version here, which will have the, uh, the slow the projectiles down, but it'll probably give you a lock-on so you can fire the plasma blobs, which are you know, technically missiles, if you ask the game. They'll just home in on the target and you won't miss anyway. Potentially less fun to use because, obviously, there's less user input in actually aiming the gun, but if you want to be lazy and just shoot stuff without really thinking about it, then a good choice. Right now, we've got a standard magazine. You can improve the capacity by 100%. It'll cost you some materials and science rank too. Fair enough, mate. Next up, we've got the stock. So right now, I've got Mark 1 completely unfolded, but you can have that folded in. You've also got Mark 2s, which are slightly better then your Mark 1s look a little bit different. And then you've also got your Marksman's ones, which under vanilla game circumstances, they just reduce your scope's way when looking down a scope, but there's nothing here to describe that sort of effect on this thing. It looks like the uh, Mark 2 is going to be the best for controlling recoil as an automatic version. I feel like that'll be the superior choice for this particular weapon. And there we go. There's our X-12 Plasma Caster in all of its glory. And I feel like we're going to have a pretty easy time with this thing. Let's talk about getting it. When you load your game after installing the X-12 Plasma Caster mod, you'll be greeted with a menu to determine where exactly the Plasma Caster will end up. You can make it so it spawns on enemies, spawns in vendors, both. And you can also make it craftable on a chemistry workbench like all of these other great weapons too. So this is what it's like. Now... When you go over this menu, there's a couple of things worth noting. This one is the X-12 controller. This will allow you to use that grenade launcher thing that I was talking about on the bottom. And this overcharge cell is the specific ammo type used to power that underbarrel attachment. And there's a couple of different ways you can craft this. Number one is using one plasma mine. And there's also a plasma grenade option. Or you can convert 20 of your plasma cartridges into one overcharge cell. 
there's also an option to make this out of just plain old materials that you might have sitting around in your settlement anyway, so go nuts on those ones. They'll be uh, probably slightly easier to make should you have the resources. And you can also craft the plasma caster down here at level 20, sorry, level something. Uh, they're injected into level this at level 25, so pretty much mid-game weapon. Science rank 2 feels like a mid-game solution to me, but getting this thing early I feel like would be a pretty good idea to give yourself an extremely powerful weapon that'll probably serve you well into the end game. So there you go, we'll make a couple more of these have them for different roles and then we'll begin. Couple of other things worth mentioning is that you can change the magnification level if you decide to put on a scope up from times two to time six. So this is an accelerated sniper barrel. So we'll go for a time six magnification, probably overkill. Also, I noticed that there was actually more stocks than I let on before. So there's also some recoil compensating ones. So I've made some adjustments, made the automatic one have the recoil compensating because that makes sense, doesn't it? Righto, so here we are outside of the good old-fashioned Immersive Gunners Plaza, and here is our X-12 Plasma Caster and what it looks like in first person. Bashing animation looks a little bit like that. Ignites a car with one hit, that's a good sign. And that's what it looks like when you're aiming down sights. And, um... I can sort of see through the middle of that, but we've got the glowing plasma bolts to sort of adjust our aim off of anyway, so that's pretty good. The reload animation looks like that, and in third person, yeah, you give the weapon a good old-fashioned Battlefield 3 M16 slap, and you just slap the new disc in, and you're good to go. And, um... I feel like you could probably be making more use out of that recoil compensating stock by putting it on your shoulder, but honestly, it doesn't feel like this thing's going to be kicking a lot anyway, so maybe it's slightly more comfortable holding it like that for some reason. Weird. And I've also got a couple other variants to show you. This one here is the sniper variant with a six time scope like I demonstrated before, and that's what this thing sounds like shooting it. I feel like the sounds could be at least changed a little bit, altered from the vanilla plasma gun sound, just giving a little bit more reverb to sort of match the power and sort of the futuristic look on this thing. Just a little bit more bass in the shot, I feel like, would make this weapon feel just a little bit better than it is, because right now it's like got a little pish sound when it should be a big, you know, big Transformers-esque noise of an energy cannon, but maybe that's just a little bit over the top. But this one here has got the, um, barrel that has the projectiles that home in on targets. We ain't got a lock on, so that's not going to be working for us. But before we do anything else, I'm going to drop these couple of plasma casters out of my inventory, switch back to our standard automatic variant. From here, we can utilize that special custom changer thing. So it's on hotkey four, activate that. And I'm debating with myself whether I should have brought on three weapons when we can change the fire mode on the fly. We can change the scope controller. If we've got a scope on this thing, of course, you can toggle the laser sight as well. The flashlight, which we haven't got activated, but there you go. It's, it's, it's some sort of flashlight has changed at the moment. And you've also got the underbarrel toggle, which is the main meat of this. Right now, we've got four of the overcharged cells. I probably could have crafted some more, but we'll use this as our initial strike as the gunners are going to be standing close to each other. And we'll see what we can do with this thing. So, bombs away. It's like a pump-action shotgun, but with a giant plasma blob shooting instead. Awesome. Okay, that was fun while it lasts. Actually, I got one more of these things. One more for the road. No, never mind. I've still got another one. Okay, we just kept getting more and more of these things, but that, there's where the fun stops for the underbarrel toggle. You could also exchange the ammunition, but we've got plenty of that, so we won't worry about that. And hopefully the guns that are left down here haven't despawned, because uh, if they did, then uh, I'd be in a bit of strife. Okay, time to begin the assaults once again using accelerated barrel and automatic receiver. The projectiles do feel a little bit slow, but anything's going to feel slow compared to the glorious uh, tit scan projectiles that we're usually uh, dealing with. And notice how when it goes into slow motion, it uses the old school Fallout 3 plasma gun sound. You could have probably put that as your standard firing sound, and that would have sounded perfect, to be honest. But it is what it is, and we got to redo the hotkeys again, so stand by it and drop them out of the inventory. Let's switch over to the sniper variant here, which has a projectile that is probably a little bit 
too slow to be reasonably practic practically used for a scope like this, but we'll try to lead a target. Ah, sniper knockdowns. There's the rub. It's a little bit redeemed to the fact that we can do that. And since we're knocking down with a proper missile projectile, I feel like that getting thrown with just a little bit of force, which is also always satisfying. Try to ADAD spam through that, mate. It's not going to work for you, is it? Anyways, so we'll activate the version with the uh, lock-on now. And they're moving so fast around that... They're dodging my projectiles somehow. I've got to really bend this like Beckham. Okay, perhaps this is not the catch-all, no-aim solution that I wanted this thing to be. It's uh, not doing as well as I first thought it would. But the damage is good at least, and if you get those shots on, then you're laughing. Haha. <laughs> and this spindly little mantis bastards, he can cop that. I think I just got a sniper knockdown with a scope that is uh, fairly short range indeed, so isn't that nice? Anyways, time to use this thing a little bit in vats, and this this gun of Merc is close enough. We'll just hose it down with the normal shooting, but I'm thinking, like, we're gonna get 95% hits across the board here, except for that left leg, which is obscured by the other leg, but it's a three-round burst for an automatic weapon like this, and you'll find that if your target is not obscured, it's just easy, easy, easy kills. So the auto-aim function is more of that space than it is um, heat seeker projectile plasma based. So there you go. You would have predicted that. Not me, but quite disappointed by the seeking barrel, but maybe that's nice and balanced considering. All right, there's a dude down there. We'll thread the needle through this. Never mind. we'll go for a critical. It's very disappointing damage there. It's unfortunate that we couldn't get it through that. That just wasn't going to cut it, is it? And I haven't really used this thing with criticals yet, but I just got 3 times 740 on that dude's face. So, how are you going to fare? Okay, maybe I had a nerd rage shipped a little bit before making that kill where I got 740 damage, but still... Those types of damages, you could do a decent VATS burst against the big monsters in this game. And you'd probably be walking away with uh, not a lot of health lost during that fight. But it's been a pretty crazy run for this thing. It's definitely... It's definitely feel like it's powerful, but it's not too powerful. Because, obviously, there's a lot of room for user error if you don't get your shots on target and it's a pretty expensive and rare ammo type so running this thing as like a daily not that you daily weapons on this game because there's no need for a daily grind but just messing around with it you will go through your ammo fairly quickly and you know they're not cheap to replenish should you do so so i wouldn't call it amazingly overpowered but you know it is on the strong side for a proper end game weapon this is pretty good and not that the game really doesn't offer you anything better than a plasma gun just a standard vanilla plasma gun in the game for a end game role and i think this one just does everything that it needs to do better and i love the customization and the functionality that you get with the little customizer widget that you can just hotkey so it's just a really solid weapon mod also you can wear it as well it's an apparel item thanks to classic holstered weapons and you know, for a character wearing stuff that's from the Institute, like Fitbit gear from the Institute, it works, kinda. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't know I think about it, but don't worry about it. Yeah, so as you can see, it looks really good if you've got Institute gear on. There we go. We've uh, we've gotten out of the, uh, the gym stuff, and now we're in a proper Corsa jacket, which, by the way, is one of the coolest... Um, things ever. Oh, look, it's some mad Securitrons. That's cool. Let's do a bit of sniping, shall we? We're not going to be holding stealth for long against the swan anyway, so we'll get a bit of sniping. We'll target the big robots with the big hitboxes. They're all staggered thanks to his stomping, and I think I nailed a cheeky little headshot against that particular dude over there, so isn't that nice? Just struggling a little bit over range here, I think. For a sniper roll, I think it's kind of pushing it, but again, what kind of plasma gun isn't? And whilst you're coming in here, we'll go ahead and uh, knock you down, and then 
will continue to hose you down. Now, I didn't get too much of a... Wow, he was immune to damage for a second there. Lucky him. I didn't get much of use out of this thing, utilizing it against the gunners with full bat shots. So, we'll just spam some criticals here and see what we can do. It's not bad getting just over 500 damage, which is uh, pretty good, to be honest. Probably worth knocking him down again, but... I think we're going to run out of ammo before we even finish him here. So, what I'm going to do is uh, wait for him to get me into Nerd Rage, because that's a smart idea, right? No, we're just going to shoot him with the uh, version with the barrel of the Sniper. 600 for the criticals. That's not too bad. We can keep him just, like, vibrating on the ground here if we want, which is good stuff. But I never realized he was so immune to damage when he was getting up. Never before have I realized that in my countless swan fights, which is probably over a thousand at this point. But if you knock him down, you better stop shooting at him or you're wasting your ammo. Full AP bar. Let's hit him again. Hoping for a couple of four leaf clover hits here. Good old Vats protection protects me from. A strike that would probably almost kill me. And, whoops, let me just hop out of the way here. Go on, mate. Bring it. Alright, there we go. We've got a nice uh, shot on him, and he's at arm's length, so we can easily back away on this train carriage if it gets down to it. And almost there. Also, notice the hip fire spread on this thing is basically perfect. That's Nerd Rage, so... No. Kind of wasted, but... He gets to die in a rather comical position with his face sliding down the side of the carriage there. Now, question is, do you have any plasma cartridges on you? No. That's weird. Maybe the modder didn't expect you to be using plasma guns at this late stage of the game, but... I feel like maybe I should have this uh, Corsa jacket worn more often because I like the Corsa jackets. They're cool. They're like almost Matrix-esque. All right. Sorry, time for a little bit of a light show, I think. So I've got this thing loaded full of the overcharge cells and um, it's good in VAT still. So we're going to fire at this guy and uh, probably do a whole lot of damage. Now, you can reload whatever you want, but have a critical. There it is. So it's like a shotgun reloading in uh, third person, or in general, actually. And you'll reload exactly how many shells you need. How cool is that? So there's a proper bullet counting reload system happening here, which is nice. And we can keep this guy nice and staggered from basically the plasma grenades that we're throwing at him. And I think we've, we've broken it somehow. I'm managing to get a lot more rate of fire than what is listed but that's fine because he's advancing on me and i'm a bit worried for my health if he hits me i'm probably going to die in a shot but then i realize it's bethesda ai so i can just outpath him that way by the way if you are emptying your mag constantly like that what will happen is have the gunners come through here yet nope nope not today um, you'll get a lot of chances of getting that uh, scrounger thing to proc. It just replenishes your magazine for free. You just get it added into your inventory. So you could potentially get a little bit more bang for your buck from your crafting if you just spam on the trigger like that, which is probably cheap and not how <laughs> the mod author would probably like you to use this thing, but you can do it. What are they going to do? Call the police on you? Nah. And where do you think you're going, mate? Oh, I was close to... See if I can snipe him from long range here. It's a shame that I can't just bounce it on the water for it to detonate and kill him. But now I'm just shooting on a tiny red bar on the screen. And let me tell you, he's not getting away with this. Just because you can fly away at a fast pace does not mean I won't track you down from the ends of the earth, buddy. I don't like mosquitoes. There we go. He got what he deserved in the end. And I think that pretty much does it for... The X12 Plasma Caster. I think it's an extremely well-made mod. And and in the dark here, you can actually see all of the glow maps here. So, you know, usually I play during the day because I used to get complaints back in the day. They used to do everything during the night and they couldn't see the gun properly. But surely you can at this point, right? If you're watching this during the day on a screen, like, directly in the sunlight, you probably can't see it as good right now. But if you're a 
in one of those gremlins who sits in a dark room all day, I think you'll be just fine. Maybe it's a little more comfortable on your eyeballs now that the, the screen has gone dark. The only problem is you get bad quality sometimes when the, the game's in darkness on the YouTube um, playback, but hopefully that's not the case. But it's a good weapon. Check it out. I do highly recommend seeing this thing. This thing's been out for quite a while at this point, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Xbox version ready to go at this point, so... I think that is good, but it's so cool having like this under barrel grenade projectile launcher thing on this thing. It's so good. And I kind of wish more more authors did that. I'd like to see under barrel shotguns at some point. Maybe they're a little bit more in the future than the prop possibly. I mean, this thing's got a magazine of its own and I don't know, maybe it's too hard to code like an M26 mass on the bottom of your rifle, but still... Oh, jump scare lobster, look out, and that's probably the most damage I've taken all video. Self-inflicted. Anyways, check it out if you want it. Link's in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys.